Welcome to McGuire's Car Crazy. It doesn't matter if you're a guy or gal, if you love cars, you're a car guy. And this is Car Crazy Central shouting the passion that 30 million of us who are car guys across America and tens of millions more around the world share in common, no matter what kind of cars we love. Join us as we focus on this emotion of being car crazy. Welcome to Car Crazy Central, ground zero for monitoring the major events and personalities of the car hobby around the world. Each week we creatively serve up a full menu of car crazy passion for you to enjoy via our car crazy television and radio shows, as well as on demand through our website, carcrazycentral.com. Our mission is pure and simple. That's right, we want to make you just a little more crazy. This is a celebration. People bring their cars here because they love them and they want to share them with other people. And so we get to be the beneficiaries of all this hard work that, that people do. I was so surprised this morning. I mean, they were all 20 to 50 percent better than I expected. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the owners should be congratulated. I knew when I brought the car, I felt the car was maybe in the top five cars. But it's really hard once you get past the top five for the judges to really pick. So I was really honored that they picked it. So just hard to believe. And now our host, Barry McGuire. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another very special edition of McGuire's Car Crazy. It is the most famous car show and the most respected car show in the world. We're here in the Monterey Peninsula for the famous, and I mean that. I mean, how I can't say enough words about it. It is the Pebble Beach Concord d'Elegance and a spectacular day. We've had sunshine all week. All of us have been coming for a lot of years. None of us remember having this kind of sunshine. And here we are this morning, bright and early, usually finding fog and clouds. And we, it's been sunny since the sun first came up. A spectacular day. The finest, the strongest field of cards ever. I don't know how they do it. Sandra Caskey is the chair, the great chairs. We had Jay and right behind us, the honorary chair, and he, of course, Lauren Tryon, were the founders of this great event. It's just a moment in time for us every year, and we're going to enjoy it all with you right after this break. This is known affectionately as the Don Williams Quarter. Don's always here like 5.30. For how many years in a row? 35 years 35 in a row. 35 years. It is 10 to 7. That the whole world's going to know. <laughs> I know. Everybody's saying, Where, where's Don? It's not right. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm starting to wonder that myself. <laughs> 37 years and this morning. You must, you must have sold a lot of cars over the weekend. I did. It was a, like, it's been a great feel... week. It's been a great week, Mary. I woke up and said, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Everybody's having fun. That's what's, and beautiful. First time in 37 years. Every straight day with every blue day. sky. Every, every day. day. But you had the expo off the lawn. Uh, how many cars? Oh, 20, 27. 27 cars. 27 cars. And I'm, I think probably 10 more today. And yeah. it goes on for weeks after as well. Ooh, months. So, yeah, months yeah, after. Yeah, so, yeah, no, I'm great. really uh, elated. Just and now fun. China. You said how many cars Fantastic. over to China? 62. 62 cars. 62 in Shanghai. The new, the new museum in Shanghai. Shanghai. It's fantastic. It's probably one of the most beautiful museums in the world. Okay, and okay, we just okay. kind of announcing it now. Yeah. And, what? Hoping everybody comes within next year. We'll have a big international party. Thanks, Don. Enjoy Thanks the day. Oh, yeah, you too. And the voice of the Pebble Beach Concord Delegates, the great voice, needs no introduction. I'll say it anyway. Ed Herman. Yeah, the voice, the nose, the feet, the whole deal. Yes. <laughs> and the look. Look the at you. Well, I mean, you have I outdone had to choose, yourself this time. I, uh, yes, well, I wow. had to buy a new suit, lost some weight, and so I chose the hottest day that we've had to wear yes, a three piece yes. suit. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I mean, you've got a lot of work ahead of you, so I just grabbed you for a second here. I do, yes. Like, I got my. Man, got my oh, man, oh, man. Cards. It is so tough when well, you're announcing all the winners to get everything right. All the stuff, and you're you're dependent on what everybody else tells you. Yes, I have had I have had people <laughs> yell the winner of the show from the tent because it's been so chaotic up there. Been, but today I, we hope no, uh, you'll, it'll you'll work get, out. No problem. Good Ed Herman, everybody. Thank God you. Bless. All right, take Bye. care. One of the great Ferrari collectors on the planet, Michael Leventhal. This is a collection. It's just so amazing, and I mean, you have you have fun. Well, we yeah, have great we have fun, fun because you were there yeah. and you visited it and you saw it. That made it even can, better. Can, can we say where you're at? Did oh, we sure. say that? The, the yeah, so you go up to the like the greatest condominium or I don't know, town, whatever you it's call it. One of those high it's rises. It's a penthouse. It's a penthouse. Right. Yeah. 
Lake Michigan or the city of Chicago. We started him on the 67th floor in this, in this building, all white. White walls, white floors. Right. And then we take him downstairs, no right. Well, you want to go down the garage, I'll show you some of my cars. So we go down there. It's a typical garage. You know, parking structure, right? Lower, the lower floors, exactly. right? Exactly. We got on an elevator. We go down to the second floor of the building. We go into red lacquer floors and red walls and yellow lacquers. Half the floor walled off, and you have to microphone unlock the door and walk into this Ferrari world. Was that outrageous oh or what? Oh my goodness! Tell me what you do when you're when you're not doing cars. I mean, you do uh, these we do kind of things events. like you guys do. We produce large scale special events, kind of I mean, like large scale. Well, special like events. Super Bowl hospitality or NBA yeah. All Star Weekend. NBA My Star smiles Star. like this because <laughs> yesterday I bought a car. Did you? I bought this amazing, amazing. Oscar Maserati, MT4, Woo. screaming. Last night I drove it to the trailer. My smile oh. was this big, I couldn't believe it. Oh my God. I can't wait to get Your it. Your smile's up. always that big. Thank you. <laughs> Outstanding. Okay, so nice to see you. Love Sorry. you, dude. Now, this is like perfect. <laughs> well, thank you, Barry. Hey, Dad. <laughs> well, it's great to be here. Just cruising, well, cruising down um, the you know, lane here. People call these cars their children. <laughs> And I thought, well, I'm not going to show Boy, a car not. this year. I'm going to show my baby. Yeah, He's 14 yeah. weeks old, Bradley McDowell Martin. Bradley, this is like, his let's... fourth car show. No, I'm glad with Wendy and Bradley here and just celebrating, talking hey, to you. you got a TV gig people. going? I'm <laughs> doing some stuff with the Russo Steel auction. Uh, we are, and we're launching a new magazine, Corvette Market. It'll be out next week. It's, it's a good time, and we're so thankful for the support is. of you and all the people in the car community. It's, it's good people, and they love what they do, and they well, share their affection. In addition to the, to the unbelievable sunshine we're having today, what could you say about this? This year's Pebble Beach. Really, it's a great yeah. family event. It really is. You know, and, a lot and, of young people here, a lot of kids here. Yep. And beautiful so. cars. And this is a celebration. People bring their cars here because they love them and they want to share them with other people. And so we get to be the beneficiaries of all this hard work that, that people do. Yeah, it's spectacular. Spectacular. Thank really you, Barry. Okay. It's great talking to you. Keep on, keep on cruising, baby. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Bill and I were hanging out at the at the gala last night, the Pell Beach sure Gala. Were. You start into this story about this incredible car. The car came back from uh, Villa de Este, where it won its best of class, and went in a container with plenty of time to uh, get it back to Boston so we could ship it here to Pebble Beach. Yeah, yeah. And then Italian customs got in the way. There was a two-week delay. We missed a sh two ships. And by the time it got on another ship uh, and, on, and it hit Boston, it was last Friday. How do we Andrew, find come in here for a second. <laughs> You're part it. of this we story. It. We went through three trucking companies who initially said, yeah, we could, but when they found out the details of how long and how many miles and how over the Rockies, they said, forget it. And I was in, in a quite a state of despair. Um, I had a full head of hair last week. <laughs> uh, I pulled it all out. And, uh, and then my son took over. So these guys right here did it for us. <laughs> and um, we're happy to be here. The car <laughs> arrives like at 7 o'clock the night before. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Great to hang out with you. Hey, Congratulations. Thanks a lot. Super. It's a great, it, this is a car crazy story. Yeah, we, are, we are car crazy. <laughs> we are <laughs> car crazy. <laughs> One of the most respected men in the entire automotive world and the car hobby, Keith Crane, Crane Publications, automotive news for the car dealer side, Auto Week for, for the car hobby side, and about how many publications all total? About 35. 35 publications. You were judging a little while ago. Or were you, I was what judging. Were you judging. We were judging open convertibles, which was a combination of cars from three classes. And I have to tell you, they're some of the most beautiful cars in the world, always at Pebble Beach. A wonderful Bugatti behind us that you're showing today. Tell us about it. Well, it's a car that literally was in a barn for 25 years in New Mexico. Uh, it had been brought over after the war from France and just put away. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that uh, uh, Brian Joseph did a terrific job on it. It's, a, it's an absolutely it gorgeous it automobile. Really spectacular. Great to be with we you, do. Keith, your buddy. I enjoyed it. <laughs> have a great As day. As always, All you right. have a great day, too. Thank you. We caught up with Bruce Meyer, my buddy, and we caught you as you were coming in this morning. Just a yeah. little, little tidbit, but I mean, you are the reason all these hot rides are here, Bruce. Well, you know, <laughs> 10 years ago, in fact, this is the, this is my shirt here. We wore them 10 years ago. This was when the uh, the bad boys invaded Pebble Beach, 1997. <laughs> this is the 10th anniversary. And for how many years did you lobby 
uh, Jay Hewitt and Lauren Tryon to get it. It was 10 years of not lobbying, begging. Begging. You and finally got finally a letter. got them. They said, look, yeah. we'll do it one year. And that's it. So just like Bruce, have fun. We're going to do it one year. Of course, they did it, and they put us even further back than this. That's right. That's right. And uh, this particular car is the absolute favorite of one of our very close friends, Jeff Beck. Oh, really? This is, is the right? car. This is the car that Jeff cloned, and it is, you know, well okay, known. Of this, this is the yeah, Doyle Gamble Coupe. Yeah. And the fellow that chopped this car, Dick Bergrun, mm -hmm. chopped this top in his garage with a hacksaw. So this was, I mean, this was one of those moments in time when somebody with great, with a great eye, put together the all-time chopping, and now they make fiberglass kind of copies of it. But you know, as you step back and you look at the car, it's, it talks to you. And in, when I restored this car, Jeff wanted some quiet time alone with this car. I mean, seriously, he is crazy about this car, and so am I. And it's very rare because the A pillar on the car is cut and lean back, and it was the first really aggressive chop on a 32 Ford coupe. So this was the coupe of coupes in the early 60s. <laughs> great day for hot riders. Yeah, and a great day for just to be alive. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. Standing in front of the Bruce Lustman suite, private party suite here, with Bruce Lustman himself. How you doing, Bruce? I'm just great. How are you? <laughs> I was trying to catch you at the race yesterday. You're so busy, and I, I never did catch up with you. But you had a good day. I had a fantastic day. I was in a 1955 Jaguar D-Type Roadster, and it was uh, quite an array of automobiles. Very exciting. And, and when uh, the checkered flag came down. The checkered flag came down. Um, I had not been passed. I passed a couple of people, and I had my best lap times. Wow. We're another father and son team. Yes, we are. He is at the Monterey Historics racing his C-type Jaguar. Where he is? Yeah, That's he awesome. was racing this afternoon. Is that a great event or what? It's, uh, I think, the finest vintage automobile race in the world. Toyota did an unbelievable job. It was very exciting and certainly better than any sponsors I've seen before. Wow, that's really something. You do it all, my friend. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>
pit stops, oil, gas, everything. No, yeah. So isn't that amazing? Isn't that, it really is. Well, mm -hmm. some cars had trouble starting this day. This, day. this one did yes. not. Ran started like a top. Every, started every time. Great, and great restore. Come this is about, get over here. Get Chris in here. <laughs> he's, he's been here we for how many? Chris has been here for how many years? Chris? Oh, just over 20 years. We've he's been, been showing cars. 20 years trying to get it. So yeah, I said, right. 20 I, years try. I didn't hear that part of the story. And it's the first time. we're 20 years. Wow. You must feel pretty good right now. Oh, it's unbelievable, Barry. The big change was we went back to the 1935 configuration, which was the straight pipe, the head fairings, uh -huh, uh -huh. and uh, it's the way it was designed originally and built, and it was only that way for one year, then it had changed through the racing years, uh -huh. then in 1938 it went back and it was uh, made into a street car by the addition of doors. Really? The head fairings were gone then. <laughs> So it doesn't look this way since 1935. The life these cars go through, the lives these cars go through, is really, really amazing. It is. The history part is amazing. So, so moment in time for you guys. So happy to capture it with our cameras. Congratulations. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow, it's awesome. Okay. Can't believe it. Take care. We want to know how car crazy you are. The Ford Flathead V8 had been the prized engine by hot rodders for nearly 20 years. But by the 1950s, improvements in design and manufacturing were allowing for lighter and more powerful engines like the Chevy 265 V8. To increase horsepower, the flathead motor was converted by some to an overhead valve configuration using Arden heads. Who was it that designed the Arden heads? Was it A, Don Garlitz, B, Zora and Yora Arcus Duntov, C, Edsel Ford, or D, Vic Edelbrock and Arden Thomas? We'll find out if you get the big head for having the right answer right after this break on McGuire's Car Crazy. We want to know how car crazy you are. The Ford Flathead V8 had been the prized engine by hot rodders for nearly 20 years. But by the 1950s, improvements in design and manufacturing were allowing for lighter and more powerful engines like the Chevy 265 V8. To increase horsepower, the flathead motor was converted by some to an overhead valve configuration using Arden heads. Well, who was it that designed the Arden heads? Was it A, Don Garlitz, B, Zora and Yora Arcus Duntov, C, Edsel Ford, or D, Vic Edelbrock and Arden Thomas. Increasing the flow of air and fuel in and exhaust out of the flathead was a recipe for horsepower. Both of these improvements could be achieved with an Arden conversion, which was named after its inventors, B, Zora and Yora, Arcus Duntov. Get it? Arden. Zora of Corvette fame, along with his brother Yora, originally developed their Arden heads to address the overheating tendencies of the flathead. But racers were quick to discover that Arden heads offered a great advantage for getting more horsepower out of their flathead V8s. And if you knew this piece of car crazy trivia, you're definitely our kind of guy. And now our host, Barry McGuire. One of the comments I hear the most when I go to car shows every weekend is how much you love these car crazy confessions. And I do too. I read every single one of them. This one comes from Tom Lazur in St. Petersburg, Florida. He writes, I would like to start out by thanking you and for being such an enthusiastic leader for all of us car guys. My story is one of love on many levels and how my car guy dreams came true in the most unexpected way. When I was 13, I met a kid at school who would become one of those few friends that becomes like family a true friend for life. We hung out almost every day after school, fishing, playing pool, and learning to play music together. One day I rode my bike over to his house and I immediately noticed a blue tarp with some kind of car under it. It turned out his dad had given him his old project car to fix up for when he turned 16. He asked me to help him with the project and I agreed. When we peeled back the tarp, I had an instantaneous transformation from 13 year old kid to true car guy. Wow, I love that statement. The car bug was definitely living in that 1972 Datsun 240Z and was after my own heart. After a full restoration that encompassed both of our every waking moments for the following three years, we had that car looking and running great, just in time to be able to cruise around on our own. We both knew every wire and washer in that car. 
Fast forward to today and I'm working full time out of college and newly married. Spotting a nice looking old Z still makes my heart jump and my car guy flames burn strong as ever. One day on a trip back to my wife's hometown in Tennessee, I noticed that there was an old Z sitting in the field just down the street from her mother's house. And she informed me that it was her uncle's and he may be inclined to part with it. I was at his house the next day and when I asked him about it, his response was something I will never forget. You don't want that one, he said. You want the one in the garage. We opened the door, pulled about 15 years worth of towels, blankets, and cardboard boxes off the car, and what I saw was a complete untouched 1972 240Z. It hadn't been on the road in over 20 years, and it was mine for $400. <laughs> I believe that was the final indication that I married the right girl. Through her, I now have everything I could ask for, including the car of my dreams. Thanks again, Barry. Tom was there. Well, thank you, Tom, for a great story that really touches my heart on several levels. First of all, one of the most interesting evolutionary forces in the car hobby day is the emergence of Japanese cars becoming collector cars. I've long been convinced that it would eventually happen someday, but without question, that someday has arrived. I mean, vintage Japanese cars are becoming more rare and more sought after and more valuable and more visible at car shows across the country. In fact, we just shot a car crazy feature at an all Japanese car show in Vallejo, California, and it was absolutely fantastic. And on a personal note, I'll never forget the first 240Z I ever saw and how its styling instantly grabbed my attention over 35 years ago. The part of your letter that really touches me, however, is how the opportunity to work on a project car, in your words, instantaneously transformed you from a 13-year-old kid to a true car guy. Well, let me tell you why that resonates with me so much. My oldest grandson, Brian Shoemaker, he's 13 years old. He lives in San Diego, and guess what? Tim Zander, the dad of one of his best friends, Bryce, invited both boys to do a frame-off restoration on a 29 pickup, which they are just completing, then taking to the El Mirage, where they can actually drive the car. And I have to tell you, Next to honoring God with his life, my greatest hope for Ryan that he becomes certifiably car crazy is happening right before my very eyes. And your story, Tom, speaks to what I can expect to see in my grandson Ryan 10 years out from now. And it warms my heart. Wow, thank you for that. Thanks for sharing your story with us. And thank you for making all of us just a little bit more car crazy. And for the rest of you, I want you to know that I personally read every car crazy confession that we receive. And you know what? Every single one of them is so, so special. If you haven't sent me your story yet, why not do it this week? Send your email to confessions at carcrazycentral.com. Thank you for watching our show this week because this episode and every episode is intended to make you just a little bit more car crazy.